Well, the church bell is rung. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. It's the second Sunday of Easter, and we're here at Grace Church on the Hill to worship the risen Lord. And in, even in this time of pandemic, to trust in God's faithfulness. We're going to begin with service of morning prayer. Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father. But confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you as many as are here present to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts we have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. There is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him, which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy. So, but at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. During this Easter season, we say the Easter anthems on page 182 of the prayer book in place of the canticle, the 90. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him, for in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ is risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die. So even in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We turn now to the readings for this 
second Sunday of Easter. A reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power and wonders and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life, you will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. For seeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and, all, and of that all of us are witnesses. This is the word of the Lord. Our psalm is Psalm 16. On page 345, Psalm 16. Preserve me, O God, for in thee have I put my trust. I have said unto the Lord, Thou art my God, I have no good apart from thee. All my delight is upon the saints that are in the earth, and upon such as excel in virtue. But they that run after another god shall have great trouble. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, neither make mention of their names within my lips. The Lord himself is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou shalt maintain my lot. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places, yea, I have a goodly heritage. I will thank the Lord for giving me counsel. My heart also instructeth me in the night season. I have set the Lord always before me, for he is on my right hand. Therefore I shall not fall. Wherefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall dwell in safety. For why thou wilt not leave my soul to hell? Neither wilt thou suffer thy Holy One to see corruption. Thou shalt show me the path of life. In thy presence is the fullness of joy, and at thy right hand are the pleasures forevermore. The Gospel according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord Jesus, when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, 
so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The word of the Lord. This morning our speaker is not here but is virtually present, the Reverend Susan McLaren, our honorary assistant, is sheltering in place with her husband in Georgetown, South Carolina. But Susan was on the roster to preach, so we are continuing our schedule and we're going to hear from Susan in sunny South Carolina. And we hope she's well. It has been an exhausting 40 days and more. We've lived through the voluntary disciplines of Lent, the fasting, the praying, the giving of ourselves through acts of mercy. We've been with Jesus on Palm Sunday when lo and behold, the people of Jerusalem gathered there for the Passover holiday, pick up palm branches and throw them in his path, proclaiming him king. And then we've experienced the whiplash effect of Holy Week from hero to heretic, from the cloud, crowd's darling to the one the crowd wants to see strung up on a cross. We've watched Jesus' betrayal at the hands of his followers. We've seen him mocked and whipped, dragged from one court to another and condemned to die. And we've stood there and watched him in his agony and in his death. And then another whiplash, the tomb is empty. Mary Magdalene sees the risen Lord, testifies to the other disciples. She is the apostle to the apostles, after all. And we have seen them dismiss her testimony as so much woman hysteria. After all that drama, is it any wonder that following Easter's virtual crowded pews, there's plenty of space today to boot up the computer and seat yourself on the couch without anybody crowding around. No wonder the Sunday after Easter is called Low Sunday, Low Energy. But I heartily wish that the virtual pews were filled to the brim again this day, because it is a day that reaches out with good news to all of us, those who are firm in our faith and those who are not so sure. Reading Readers of today's gospel text tend to zoom in on Thomas, doubting Thomas. I have to tell you that I am not fond of that, that, and that's putting it mildly. I am not fond of labeling Thomas this way. He's not the Lone Ranger. It's not as though any of us have never doubted. I doubt this, that the winter will ever end. I doubt that I will be able to resist the candy in the Easter basket for much longer. I doubt that things will ever be the same now that the virus has entered our world. 
Oh yes, dear people, we doubt a plenty, except in the case, of course, of chocolate ice cream. Nobody ever doubts the deliciousness of chocolate ice cream. Take a really hard look at today's text if you are looking for more than one doubter. The disciples, those true blue Jesus followers, are held up in some undistinguished room, fearing for their lives. They are marked men and women. They followed Jesus. They believed he would change the world for them. He said he would return. But frankly, whoever leaps up out of the grave, it just can't be true. No matter what the Magdalene says, they doubt. They doubt big time in fear and trembling. But soon their world is rocked. Jesus comes. He comes to them through a solid wall, but in his flesh, his sarks, it's real. And the gift he gives them is real as well. He gives them the gift of the Holy Spirit. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Jesus empowers his weak and doubting disciples with the will and the ambition and the ability to get along with perceived enemies and testify to Jesus' truth. What a gift to give people who are just minutes ago have been trembling in their boots. But Thomas, sometimes called the twin, he misses the boat. He's not in the room. He's braved the city streets. We do not know why but he has heard the fear-inflamed disciples lock the door behind him. So when he gets back, when they unlock the door and let him in, the change in these men and women must gobsmack him. What happened to those wilted, defeated cowards? All of a sudden, they are filled with an amazing joy. We have seen the Lord. Sure you have. Sure you have. Prove it. No better yet. Let Jesus prove it. I have to see the marks of his passion before I'm going to get excited, before I'm going to risk my neck. Thomas waits an entire week. Jesus appears once more, and Jesus gives him a challenge. Put your fingers where I did bleed. See that my body is real, even while I can transcend the natural world. And Thomas is forced to abandon his doubt and face the reality of what he sees, that he might even have the courage to touch. Dear people, if only we could see Jesus in the flesh, if only he would come to grace on the hill, our own faith doubts would be crushed in the reality of his reality. But, and I'm willing to bet on this, he will not come, not until the last day a belief we proclaim each and every time we recite the creed. He shall come to judge the living and the dead, and then we shall see him in his glorious flesh, perhaps to fear and trembling, but we will see him. Fortunately for us, though, this is not the only time we experience his presence. Our worship is prayer and song, Bible reading and sermon, confession and forgiveness kneel, and if we are blessed, a baptism. Our worship points us to the living Lord, and when we are able to immerse ourselves in this experience, we experience the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen and have yet believed, and blessed are those who doubt, because the reality of faith will bring them everlasting joy. Amen. Thank you, Susan. We continue with our worship by reciting the Apostles' Creed found on page 10 in the prayer book. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them the trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the queen and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And you, thy ministers, with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Keep peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. The Collect for this second Sunday after Easter. Almighty God, who has given thine only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification, grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve thee in pureness of living and truth through the merits of the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. continue in our prayers. I want to offer a prayer composed by a young mother of two children in Seattle. Her prayer is this. May we who are merely inconvenienced remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors Remember those most vulnerable. May we who have the luxury of working from home remember those who must choose between preserving their health or making their rent. May we who have the flexibility to care for our children when their schools close, remember those who have few options. May we who have to cancel our trips, remember those that have no safe place to go. May we who are losing money in the tumult of the economic market remember those who have no resources.
may we who settle in for a quarantine at home remember those who have no home. During this time when we cannot physically embrace one another with hugs, let us yet find ways to be God's loving embrace to our neighbors and to the littlest and the least. As uncertainty and anxiety and fear grip our land, let us choose the way of love. Through Christ our Lord. We pray for those in our parish who are sick or suffering, have asked for our prayers, most struggling in body, mind, or spirit. Remembering Jennifer, Rosie, Dolph, Gail, Logan, Elizabeth, Graham, Janice, Anne, Melissa, Lily, Catherine, Jill, Hans, Joe, Jan, Yorick, Lorraine, Chris, Bob, Tony, Margaret, Sophie, Albert, Hermione, that they may be comforted and relieved. From our community, we remember Ian and Marge Anthony, whose wedding anniversary is celebrated this week. They were married here at Grace Church nine years ago. Thank God for many blessings in their married life together. Remember before God all those who are struggling and those who are working to full capacity on the front lines of our healthcare system. Pray for all nurses and hospital workers, physicians, scientists and staff, all those who maintain the high caliber of our system in this province. We pray for our political leaders and all who have the burden of responsibility and decision-making at this time. We remember before God those who have died recently from our community, remembering with thankfulness the lives of Jackie Lamont, Bill Langford, Bill Pocock, John Batista, and relatives of parishioners who have died from COVID, Uma and Raj Pali. Rest eternal grant to them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, Give us that due sense of all thy mercies that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful and that we show forth thy praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to thy service. 
by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and has promised that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt hear their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.